Alien vs. Predator Requiem. This starts where the first one picked off, literally, at those very events, those very seconds. If you haven't already seen the first movie and don't want to be spoiled, don't watch the rest of this review and don't watch the second movie first because it spoils it. Anyway, the chestburster comes out of the Predator and the little scout ship or whatever it is crashes onto Earth. This interrupts a redneck from teaching his small boy how to kill defenseless animals and they go to you know try to find out what happened it's interesting to note that in this scene the hunter very clearly points the rifle directly at his son when he tries to you know check the so yeah good on learning those gun safety rules there buddy not long after we meet one of our leads, a man who's coming back from prison. And he apparently also had a homosexual experience with the sheriff. At least that's what I thought when I first heard it. I mean, they're talking about how they used to you know, be in the back seat and doing something that was illegal there. and. It was three years ago, and, you know, one of them sort of regretted what he did? I don't know. Okay, fine. They are really talking about that they were both rambunctious as teenagers, and then, you know, the lead one, I don't remember his name, I don't care to. Yeah, he got thrown in jail for being a burglar or something. He and his brother are two of the leads. His brother has a crush on this young girl who's clearly just there to arouse all the young males in the audience and that's about his character actually she's currently with a jerk because the hot girls in movies usually are when they aren't with the lead character and that's about it for there anyway the last of our leads is another Ripley knockoff and her daughter. The Ripley knockoff recently got home from the military and the daughter is having a little trouble reconnecting to her. These subplots aren't really too bad. They just don't really manage to get us to care about the characters. That never actually happens. And yeah, don't get me wrong, from a visual standpoint, this movie is pretty good. These guys know how to put nice visuals up on the screen. There's a lot of darkness, low lighting, but enough that you can at least sort of tell what's going on. This really works well watching it in the theater, especially, or in a very dark room. However, the Strauss brothers... This was their directorial debut. They don't know how to direct. They know how to do nice effects. And they appear to still be doing this. I haven't watched Skyline yet, but it appears to be another example of a poorly directed, poorly written movie with poor characterization that essentially only exists so that they could throw as many impressive visual effects in there and give it a pretentious title. Seriously, Requiem? It's two aliens fighting each other, dude. And that's really about it. The acting isn't very good. The, the human beings are still just in the way. What we came to see are these two creatures fighting each other. I will say when they do meet up, meet up in this, it is better than in the first. 
these directors don't have Paul W.S. Anderson's annoying directorial habits and, I don't know, script writing habits. A lot of this is fairly effective. It's also pretty gratuitous. This is for a certain kind of moviegoer. Basically, the people who want to see a lot of blood and gore, the kid I mentioned earlier, we are talking a kid, he's not even a teenager, he's maybe 10, 12 at the most, is face hugged. This isn't a spoiler, that happens at the beginning of the movie. And yes, we later do see the chest bursting. Again, not a spoiler, happens I think less than 20 minutes into the movie. Do we really need stuff like that? It's not even that we care that much. It's just a cheap shock effect, you know? I mean, I wouldn't even call it that good if you go for, you know, gore and stuff. I'd rather go with... I don't remember his exact name right now, but that guy who did, most recently, Piranha 3D, before that, Mirrors, and what he's probably most famous for still, the remake of The Hills Have Eyes. I haven't watched that one, though, but he seems to know how to do effective gore, and the movies are still pretty good. Mirrors doesn't have that good of a plot, but it's still fairly entertaining. It's worth watching if you just want to see a gory horror movie and you're a big fan of the concept. This just has a lot of these things and it's almost pornographic, you know? It We don't particularly care when these things happen. I will say that there are some reasonable scares in this, and it certainly is more of a horror movie than the first one was. But it does still also want to throw in a lot of action, so we have a lot of scenes of either the Predalien or the Predator. And perhaps I should go into those two a little bit about the concept of them. The the Pred Alien is basically trying to take over this small town and one day the world. And the Predator is if you watch Pulp Fiction he's basically a wolf, you know. He's the cleaner. He comes in and cleans up after the messes, you know. This, you know, jet crashed, he finds out that the Pred Alien escaped, and he goes out to stop it. And clean up after the, you know, the aliens that also... And this does a reasonable job of a small town gradually being taken over. There is some tension. I would say the Strausses are good at not wasting stuff like that, but do remember this is counterweight by the fact that we care about no one. And don't even get me started on the dialogue. It's just so flat and phoned in. There are so many lines where they're trying to be funny and they're not funny. Not even a little bit. I don't think there's a single funny line in this movie. And it needs something to lighten the mood after this 91 minute dark, dreary... sort of cruel story of extraterrestrials coming here and... You know, I mean... Even 
Alien and Alien 3 had at least a little, I'm not sure I want to call it comic relief, but you know, stuff that you could maybe at least chuckle at, smile at, you know. I mean, Strauss's Hello, it actually works kind of well as a counterweight to all the darkness. It's, it's a contrast. You know, it makes, when you go here, it makes it much more effective when you go here. When you go here and stay here for 90 minutes, it's just gonna wear us down. Honestly, this is my second viewing. When I watched it in the theater, I fell asleep maybe halfway through. I didn't sleep for terribly long, I think, and it was probably more an issue with me not getting enough sleep at the time, but when I was watching it here again, I recognized fairly little other than the overall structure and some of the things that do kind of stick out. And I didn't even recognize where I fell asleep, where I woke up. I don't even really feel like I saw what I missed last time. I'm literally talking minutes after I stopped watching it. I started the camera maybe a minute or two after the DVD credits ended rolling and I'm already forgetting stuff about this movie. That's really not a good sign. And it's not because it's at all visually unattractive. It's just other than that it isn't much of anything impressive. There's nice effects, there's ni nice gore, sometimes creative gore, that's about it. The characters are quite stereotypical. A lot of the things that happen that aren't gore related also feel phoned in. You know, it's like they're crafting a screenplay around these situations that they want to put the alien and predator in. I mean, I'm not saying that the overall structure of the script or the story is poor, but it doesn't feel like they care. It's like, okay, fine, you know, cute moment between mother and daughter, now let's move on. Let's, let's blow something up. Let's throw blood at someone. And it just, it doesn't work that well. It's not a very good movie, pure and simple. The Predator gets some new tech, and it's kind of cool, and unlike the first one, in this one, you know, the Predator doesn't, they don't just throw in a bunch of characters, just have the Predator use some weapons on them. In this, it, you know, the aliens suffer. They change what the Predalien is like, although I suppose we don't technically know what it's like because this is the first time we see one in the movies. And this really isn't a spoiler, there is of course an inevitable head-on conflict between the Predalien and the Predator, and it's pretty good. It's better than what we got in AVP. In general, the Predator on Alien action and the Human on Alien action tends to be pretty good. We don't see too much of at least the aliens. I think the Predator we maybe do see a little bit more of than is good. The thing is, you know, they have to show him have to they show him clean up a lot, you know. He does still sometimes surprise you, and they don't abuse the crap out of the vision modes like the first AVP did. We get a brief glimpse of the Predator homeworld, and a little flight technology that we haven't seen before. And it's cool, and it's nice that it lasts for such a short amount of time. It makes us think, you know, makes us fill in the blanks. The Predator and Alien aren't diminished in power in this. They 
are powerful and threatening whenever you see them, pretty much. The Predator loses a little because we see him so much, and because a lot of what he's doing is just targeting the aliens. That might be about it for the spoiler-free. I think it is. So, the DVD. This might just be the regular DVD, although this is the version not seen in cinemas. Supposedly seven minutes of action that they had to cut out. I didn't really notice it. That's how little this film stuck with me. There are two commentary tracks, one by the two directors and a producer by the name of John Davis. The directors, they sound like they really are the way you might think they are if you just look at their direction style. They're kind of disgusting, not really... attractive human beings, you know, they just, they like throwing a lot of violence onto the screen and not really caring about if there's, like, proper story, if we care about anyone in the film, you know, I don't know. I just have the feeling that if they didn't have, you know, the money to do big-budget movies like this, they'd be doing porn. Not saying that porn is necessarily a bad thing, it's just... it's a certain type of people, you know? It's... it's not somewhere where you tend to care very much about the quality of the story, of the acting, you know? Okay, I will say, I could imagine that they have a better visual sense than porn directors. And the second commentary track is with... Now I can actually put names to these guys. Tom Woodruff and Alec Gillis, who designed the alien, at least, and the Pred Alien. They talk some about designing that, and like I said in my review of the first AVP, they have a very dry sense of humor. If you like dry humor, they're very funny. So, that was my spoiler-free review of Alien vs. Predator Requiem. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.